dear friends welcome to the redemptress media center and to our new podcast series redemptress homilies on the go a series of reflections on the word of god led by redemptress missionaries in december 2020 in the midst of the global covid-19 pandemic when church buildings remain closed to the public with no opportunities to go out shopping to have family gatherings and the news of suffering and death all around could christmas really be christmas perhaps now we could really focus on the spiritual meaning of christmas in this context the redemptress media center brought the hope of the two comings of the lord to every home in the first ever online advent mission this is a series of seven mission sermons on the word of god to bring courage hope and renewal to your family do you sometimes feel as if your prayers just go unanswered Do you feel like a prayer is a useless waste of time? In this podcast Father Shiju Muller Serial CSSR helps us understand what prayer is, why we should pray and how we ought to pray. As challenging as it may seem, no matter how impossible your situation may seem, we stand to benefit greatly by taking all our human situations to God in prayer. the challenge is to approach the lord with great faith and perseverance this mission sermon originally premiered on 10 december 2020 father shijumula serial cssr is a current dean of studies and lecturer of church history at mount saint alphonsus redemptus theologate in bangalore he was a former provincial council member in the ligori province of redemptus He is much admired for his deep reflections on the word of God and well-researched and balanced perspective on the history of the church. Listen in even as you go about your daily activities and be transformed by the word of life. This mission sermon originally premiered on 10th December 2020. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus left that place and went away to the district of Tyre and Sidon. Just then a Canaanite woman from that region came out and started shouting, "Have mercy on me, Lord, son of David. My daughter is tormented by a demon." But he did not answer her at all, and his disciples came and urged him, saying, "Send her away." for she keeps shouting after us he answered i was sent only to the lost sheep of the house of israel but she came and knelt before him saying lord help me he answered it is not fair to take the children's food and throw it to the dogs she said yes lord yet even the dogs eat the crumbs that fall from their master's table Then Jesus answered her Woman great is your faith let it be done for you as you wish and her daughter was healed instantly The gospel of the Lord praise to you Lord Jesus Christ My dear brothers and sisters in Jesus Christ Recently I happened to read about a woman who was so frustrated with her parish priest while he visited her as he managed to strike a conversation with her she came down with her long story of what she called frustrations with god she narrated how from her childhood she had been so faithful to her evening rosary and other devotional prayers however ever since she lost her husband tragically in an accident just 4 years after her marriage she had stopped going to church she had stopped praying and she further said that she was struggling to survive with her two children and there was no need to pray and she said even if we pray god would do what he wishes to do and therefore 
She finds a reason not to pray. She finds a reason not to go to church. As my dear brothers and sisters, there are such experiences in our own lives when we feel that God is not listening to our prayers. There are times when God gives us the impression that he is not listening to us. There are moments when we feel that we don't get what we ask for. There are also moments when we ask for something, we feel that God just does the opposite. There are times when we feel that God is simply absent in our lives. And all these things lead us to have frustrations, not very different from the woman in the incident I narrated. Sometimes we are frustrated. Sometimes we are disillusioned. Sometimes we are disappointed. And we do not know whether there is any light anywhere near darkness. We don't know how to overcome this sickness, this loss, this death in our lives. We are not even sure whether God is able to bring his saving grace into our tough situations, into our difficult situations. Perhaps we might be upset with our marriages, our families, our parents, grandparents, children. Perhaps we may be upset with our jobs and all other things that happen in our lives. And all these things can lead us to frustration in life. And with such frustrations, when we approach God, God prescribes only one medicine for us. He just suggests only one solution for us. We read about that in the Gospel of Luke, chapter 11, verse 9. I say to you, ask, you shall receive. Search, you will find. Knock, the door will be opened for you. In other words, whenever we don't fail to ask, the Lord will give us what we need in life. Whenever we do not fail to seek, we will find life. The Lord will help us to find life. And whenever we do not fail to knock, the door will be opened to us and we will find God and experience God. As my dear friends, what does Jesus try to teach through these words? Jesus wants, uh, wants to tell us this evening that if we pray confidently, if we pray with confidence, with persistence and perseverance, we will overcome our hardships, our struggles, our difficulties, and the Lord will fill us with his happiness and joy. In the scripture reading we have just listened to, we have a model of prayer, a very important model of prayer. And there we meet a woman who is different from all of us. First of all, the gospel writer tells us that she is a non-Jewish Canaanite woman. An analysis of the conversation between Jesus and her shows her perseverance and persistence in her prayer to Jesus. And she comes to Jesus with a desperate need, a need to cure her possessed daughter, a daughter who was tormented by demon. And she comes to Jesus and pleads, Lord, have mercy on me. My daughter is tormented. My daughter is severely possessed by demon. And one would have expected that Jesus would have pity on her. But Jesus seems unmoved. He doesn't utter a word. And then his disciples intervene. He be they beg Jesus to send her away. She is, and she is becoming a nuisance. She is troubling us. In other words, they were saying to Jesus, she is not part of us. She doesn't belong to us. She doesn't belong to our caste. She doesn't belong to our clan. She doesn't speak our language. 
She is so troublesome, send her away. And their intervention makes things worse. Jesus tells her, I am sent only to the lost sheep of Israel. And she comes forward and begs him again, Lord, help me. And this time also her request was turned down. And Jesus rebuked. Jesus said that you ca I cannot take the food of the children and give it to dogs. Jesus was equating her and her, dog, uh, her daughter to dogs. A derogatory word to the ears of the Jews. As my dear friends, she is a courageous woman. She doesn't allow herself to be put off by the apparently harsh words of Jesus. She dares to say, Lord, even the dogs feed themselves with the crumbs that fall from the master's table. And these words of that woman moves Jesus. And Jesus said, O woman, great is your faith. Let it be done to you according to your wish. And the gospel writer tells us that her daughter was healed. As my dear friends, the question that we need to ask ourselves tonight is, what was the conviction of that Canaanite woman? What was her faith? What was her confidence? Her conviction was this, Lord, unless you give me what I ask for, I will not stop crying out to you. I will not stop praying to you. I will not stop pleading before you. Lord, you may take one day, one week, one month, one year, five years, ten years, but I will not stop praying to you if you don't grant me what I ask for. Lord, you may go from place to place. You may go from village to village. I will come after you. I will trouble you. I will be persistent in my prayer. Wherever you go, you will see me. I have confidence in you. I place my trust in you. I know only you can grant me my request. As my dear friends, the confidence, the faith, and the conviction of that Canaanite woman was that her Lord will not let her down. As my dear friends, in the dialogue of the scripture reading, we have a wonderful model of our own experiences in prayers. This Canaanite woman experiences many negative responses from Jesus to her prayers, but she was persistent in her prayer. She was persevering in her prayer. She was confident that Jesus would grant her request. And that is why she said, Lord, have mercy on me. My daughter is tormented by a deep demon. Then she said, Lord, help me. And then finally she said, Lord, even the dogs feed themselves with the crumbs that fall from the master's table. In other words, she continued to have confidence and dependence on God in spite of the Lord's rejection of her pleas and his insulting rebukes. As my dear brothers and sisters, the story of the Canaanite woman helps us to understand what prayer is. Many people have defined prayer differently based on the experiences they have had. But all these definitions boil down to one thing. Prayer is total dependence on God. Prayer is entrusting ourselves completely and fully to God. And in every genuine prayer, we entrust our cares, our worries, our anxieties, and our needs to him because we know that God will do the best for us. And if we lack this attitude, then we can end up in utter frustration and even anger with God. My dear brothers and sisters, in the Gospel of Luke chapter 17, 
verse 11 and the following. We read about Jesus healing 10 lepers. All these 10 lepers cried out to Jesus, Son of David, have mercy on us. We are suffering. We are marginalized in the society. We are hated by the society. We have no place in the society. Heal us and restore us. And Jesus heard the cry of all these 10 lepers. And the scripture says, except the one Samaritan, the others did not come back to thank God. Why didn't they come back to Jesus? They didn't come back because they were looking for a miracle in their life. They were just looking for a healing. They were just looking for a cure. But one person, that Samaritan, came back to Jesus because he was not only looking for a healing in his life. He was not just looking for a cure. He was not looking for a success or progress in his life. He was looking for the one who works miracles. He was looking for the one who gives healing. He was looking for the one who gives success. As my dear friends, what is our attitude in, in prayer? Do we pray just for a healing? Do we pray just for a success or progress? Or in our prayers, do we desire for Jesus Christ, the greatest gift of God? And if we have Jesus as the greatest gift of God, every moment of our life will become a miracle. St. Mother Teresa of Calcutta once said, Our prayers make our hearts bigger until it is capable of containing the gift of God himself. The psalmist understood this. The psalmist realized that God was the greatest gift in his life. And that is why he said, Lord, I desire only one thing. I desire only one thing. I want to sit in your temple and behold your beauty. In other words, I want to sit in your presence and look at your face. I want to listen to you. Sitting in your presence, I want to talk to you. And that was the conviction of the psalmist about prayer. The psalmist also realized that the Lord was the greatest strength in his life. And that is why he said, the Lord is my shepherd. There is nothing I shall want. Even though I walk through dark valleys, I will not fear any evil. Because the Lord is with me. He is my shepherd. When he is with me, I am strong. He will guide me. He will lead me. I don't need to be afraid of anything else. As my dear friends, Solomon prayed for the wisdom to discern between what is good and what is evil. He didn't pray for a car. He didn't pray for something material. He didn't pray for money. He didn't pray for success. He did not even pray for victory. As a king, he should have prayed for victory. But he didn't pray for any of these. He prayed for the wisdom to discern between what is good and what is evil. In other words, he wanted to be always in the presence of the Lord. He wanted to be always under the influence of the Lord. Because he realized that the Lord was the greatest gift in his life. As my dear friends, it is very easy for us to believe in a God who always works miracles. It is very easy for us to believe in a God who always gives us healing. Let me turn your attention to the first book of Kings, chapter 18, verse 21 and the following. In this passage, my dear friends, we come across a competition, a competition between the prophets of Baal and prophet Elijah. The competition was about to how the competition was to prove how whose God was true God. Prophet Elijah said, you bring two bulls, you cut 
one bull in pieces and put it on firewood. I will also cut the other bull in pieces and put it on firewood. And if your God is the true God, your God will send down fire and that fire will consume the sacrifice that you have prepared. If my God is the true God, my God will send down the fire and that fire will consume the sacrifice I have prepared. The prophets of Baal began to shout the name of their God. They began to pray to their God. They began to invoke the name of their God. But no fire came down to consume the sacrifice they had prepared. But the moment prophet Elijah invoked the name of Yahweh, fire came down and consumed the sacrifice he had prepared. It was a miraculous experience for prophet Elijah. It was a splendid experience for prophet Elijah and for all those who were gathered there. But my dear friends, the question that we need to ask ourselves is, do we have such experiences in life, such miraculous experiences of God in life? Many of us do not have such experiences. What is our experience of God? We have the experience of God like Jesus had the experience of God. Jesus cried out, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Sometimes our experience of God is the same. We cry out with Jesus, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? And yet the cry of Jesus was not a cry of defeat. The cry of Jesus was not a cry of disappointment. The cry of Jesus was not a cry of disillusionment. The cry of Jesus was not a cry of frustration. The last words of Jesus in the Gospel of John are these. It is finished. In other words, Jesus was saying, I have finished. I have completed. I have accomplished. I have fulfilled. I have fulfilled the will of my father. I have completed the will of my father. I have accomplished the will of my father. The father did not just leave him there. The father did not leave him in the tomb. The father raised him from the dead. He brought him to glory. He made him victorious. As my dear friends, the father strengthened Jesus in his suffering. His total dependence on the father was not in vain. And his dependence on God made him to be victorious in life. And in his resurrection, he emerged victorious. As my dear friends, this is what prayer does to us. Prayer strengthens us every time when we pray. Our dependence on God will not go in vain. Finally, we will emerge victorious in our lives. And that is why Jesus says, ask, you will receive. Search, you shall find. Knock, the door will be open to you. We must always ask. We must always seek. We must always know. In other words, we must always pray at all times, in good times and in bad times. Our Holy Father, Pope Francis once said, our prayer cannot be reduced to an hour on Sundays. It is important to have a daily relationship with him. St. Alphonsus Liguori, the founder of the Redemptorist said, the one who prays will be saved, the one who does not pray will be damned. Pope Benedict XVI, commenting on these words, once said, to save one's soul without prayer is very difficult, even impossible. And by praying, our salvation is made secure and easy. And then he said, if we do not pray, 
we have no excuse because the grace of prayer is given to each one of us if we are not saved the fault is entirely with us because we shall have our own and failure to answer because we did not pray and therefore he reminds us in no situation can we do without prayer the disciples of jesus realized the importance of prayer the value of prayer the disciples of jesus noticed jesus turning the water into wine they saw jesus walking on the water they saw jesus raising the dead they witnessed jesus multiplying the bread and fish and they saw jesus working miracles and healings but jesus they never asked jesus jesus teach us how to turn the water into wine they never asked jesus lord teach us how to walk on the water how to multiply bread how to raise the dead they never asked such things but one thing they asked jesus to teach them and we read about that in the gospel of luke chapter 11 verse 1 and the following jesus was praying in a certain place and after he had finished praying one of his disciples went to him and asked him lord teach us how to pray the most amazing thing that jesus did was to pray and the disciples realized that the disciples knew that the most beautiful thing that jesus did was to pray behind everything that jesus did there was that man of prayer and that is why the disciples asked him lord teach us how to pray and the lord taught them how to pray how to discern the will of the father that is to wish nothing other than what the father wishes he taught them to pray all the times he taught them to pray always in busy times in times of joy in times of success popularity and fame in times of sorrow pain and suffering we read in the gospel of mark chapter 6 verse 46 about jesus going to a lonely place to pray after a busy day the whole day jesus was with the people he multiplied bread for them he preached the word to them he listened to them he satisfied their hunger he addressed to their needs and he was very tired and at the end of the day he went to a lonely place and prayed spent time with the father he took all that he did during the day to the father and shared with the father as my dear friends what is our attitude toward prayer when we have a busy day do we give some times to god or do we go to bed forgetting god without becoming aware of his blessings in our life jesus also prayed when he was joyful when he was successful when he was with popularity and fame in the gospel of luke chapter 5 verses 5 to 12 we read about jesus healing a leper after this healing the name of jesus began to spread many people came to see him to touch him to listen to him and jesus became very popular he was very successful his name and fame spread all around but jesus did not go out with his friends 
to celebrate that success, to celebrate that popularity. But instead, he went to a lonely place to spend time with his father. He wanted to share that joy, that success, that popularity and fame with the father. As my dear friends, when we are successful, when we have popularity and fame, do we become proud and arrogant? Or do we realize that there is God behind all our success, fame, and popularity? And do we thank him for that? Jesus also prayed when he was misunderstood. There were days when he was misunderstood, when he was criticized by others. And we have such one such incident in the Gospel of Luke chapter 6, from verse 6 to 12. On a Sabbath day, Jesus healed a person with a withered hand. And immediately, the Pharisees and the Herodians came together to criticize Jesus. They plotted against him. And according to them, Jesus committed a terrible mistake. Jesus violated the sacred law of the Sabbath. Jesus was very sad. Jesus did something good. He healed that person with a withered hand. He gave him a bright future. But people did not understand him. People criticized him. And what did Jesus do? He went to a lonely place to spend time with the Father. He took that sorrow. He took that sadness to the Father and shared that sorrow and sadness with the Father. Yes, my dear friends, when people criticize us, when people misunderstand us, how do we handle such times, such moments in our life? Do we use an, an eye for an eye principle towards them? Or do we take that sorrow, that sadness, that misunderstanding and criticism to the Lord in prayer and share them with the Lord? The Lord also teaches us that our prayer will strengthen us when we are disturbed, when we are upset, when our dear ones abandon us, when we are in pain and in suffering. We read in the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 26, verses 36 to 46, about Jesus leaving everyone, including his chosen ones, and going to a lonely place to pray, going to the Garden of Gethsemane to pray. When he thought about his painful death, he was disturbed, he was upset. In those struggling moments, he longed for human support. And with that longing, he left prayer and came to his disciples for support. And his disciples were not there to support him. They did not understand him. They were asleep. And Jesus went back to prayer again. And when he thought about his impending and painful death, he was once again disturbed and upset. And he left prayer and came to his disciples again, looking for support. But, did not get, but he did not get any support this time. His disciples were not there to understand him. His disciples did not understand the struggles that he was facing. And he went a third time to pray. And at that time, we read that an angel of God appeared to him and strengthened him. In his earnest prayer, he received the divine energy to continue his mission. 
Yes, my dear friends, this event, this incident teaches us two important lessons. First of all, when Jesus was in the garden of Gethsemane, he said to his disciple that he was deeply grieved and therefore to remain with him, to support him. But the disciples did not support him. They did not understand him. This shows us something very important. No human person can understand us fully, however close that person is to us. No human person can understand us the way we want us to be understood. No human person can support us the way we want us to be supported. No human person can love us the way we want us to be loved. Only God can understand us the way we want us to be understood. Only God can support us the way we want us to be supported. And secondly, when Jesus was disturbed and upset, he did not help, get that help from his friends, his intimate friends. He got the support and help from his earnest prayer. And therefore, this teaches us a very important lesson. There is absolutely no substitute for our prayer. No human person, no intimate friend, no gifted spiritual director, no qualified counselor can substitute prayer in our life. More than other means, prayer will strengthen us and console us, give us lasting consolation when we are disturbed, when we are abandoned by our dear ones, when we are in pain and grief. Prayer transforms our lives. There is a beautiful incident in the life of St. John Maria Vianney. As a young priest, when he was in charge of a small parish, he noticed an elderly man coming into the, par to the parish church every day and spending an hour before the Blessed Sacrament. After a few days, John Maria Vianney went to him and asked him why he came to the church every day and spend an hour before the Blessed Sacrament. And he would reply to him, Father, before I come to this church to pray, I have a lot of work to do at home. My wife is paralyzed. I cook food for her. I wash her clothes. I clean the house. And then I come here to spend an hour before the Blessed Sacrament. When I go back, Father, I realize that my problems are the same. My difficulties are the same. My wife is still paralyzed. She is not cured. But one thing that happens in my life, Father, when I go back home, I have a new energy, new faith, new confidence. And I go back home, I spend a little more time with my wife. I am able to love her a little more. I am able to encourage her a little more. And this is what my spending an hour before the Blessed Sacrament does to me, Father. My prayer transforms my life. My prayer helps me to accept the will of God. I know that my prayer doesn't change the mind of God, but it does help me to accept His will. As my dear friends, that's what prayer does to us. Prayer transforms our lives. Prayer helps us to accept the will of God. Prayer strengthens us when we are 
abandoned by others when we are in pain and in suffering. Let us think about the life of Elizabeth and Zachariah. They longed for a child. They prayed for many years. And after many years in their old age, the Lord heard their cry and gave them a son. And they named him John, which means God is gracious. They realized that God had been gracious to them all through their life. In moments of struggle, in moments of hardship, in moments of sadness and sorrow, God had been gracious to them. Mary, our mother, also realized that God had been good to, the, to her. God had been gracious to her in spite of her many sufferings, hardships, and difficulties. And that is why she sang, My soul magnifies the Lord, my spirit rejoices in God, my Savior. My dear friends, let us also sing together with Mary, My soul magnifies the Lord, my spirit rejoices in God, my Savior. Because my God is with me. My God will never abandon me. My God will never let me down. He is gracious to me and He is good to me. And let this be our conviction. Amen. We do hope you enjoyed this podcast. Catch our other Redemptorist homilies on the go either on our RMC YouTube channel or from wherever you listen to podcasts. God bless you all mightily.